tonight it's all about us, eh, fellas? Let's outchange, let's outwork, and out want them. Let's get her going, boys! Save again by Chicken! Blast him here! It's good! Steve Rooch into the Bucks have eliminated the defending Stanley Cup champion Redway! In a minute, they beat Detroit four straight. This team's for real. There it is! In sudden death overtime! And the enchanted season continues! The Anaheim Mighty Ducks are going to the Stanley Cup final! not scared to lose, we go out there to win. This is our house, and this is our time! Salation scores! Off the floor, on the board, Paul Correa! A great night battle level here, gentlemen, not a chance, score! What an unbelievable season this has been for the mighty Ducks of Anaheim! For the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, the end of the 2002 campaign marked the third straight year playoff hockey would be missing from the pond. While the season once again finished prematurely, things were not as bleak as they seemed. The difficulty that the Mighty Ducks had was scoring enough goals to win hockey games. They led the National Hockey League in one goal losses. You had a sense that they were, however, building towards something very positive. And moving forward to this year, there was a regime change. Brian Murray, the coach, took over as the general manager, and I think that gave him a very unique perspective as to what personnel changes needed to be made to bring this team to a new level. And uh, he made some big deals right off the bat. At the 2002 entry draft, Murray and Lou Lamarillo laid the groundwork for a blockbuster deal. He said, Sakura's a hell of a player. I said, Jeff Reese is a hell of a player. I asked him again, I said, Sakura's 100%. No, he said 100%. Pretty big hockey news concerning the New Jersey Devils tonight and the deal being consummated apparently just moments before we took the air. At the centerpiece tonight of a seven-player deal with the Anaheim Mighty Ducks is Peter Sakura. Right off the bat, uh, you could see there was a plan. They got Sakura over uh, from New Jersey, and so uh, you know they made a lot of free agent signings. That first day of uh, free agency, they signed Adam Oates, which was, you know, uh, this is a future Hall of Famer, and then coming in here with his experience and his, his passing skills, and we were pretty excited about that. But perhaps the gutsiest off-season move was the hiring of new head coach Mike Babcock. I mean, I can sit here and talk to you until I'm blue in the face, but. You are what you do and not what you say, and it's time for me to show you. I knew that he was very, uh, very driven person, and he was known around the league as a guy who's more prepared than anybody you will ever meet. And he was hard on the players early on. He wanted to really pound them a little bit about, about the fact that they had to play a system, and if they weren't going to play the system, they weren't welcome. Laid off the goalie's pad, stop in front. I don't want any globetrotter stuff. I want you to shoot the puck and stop in front, and then I'll go through the options as we get going. Any questions? Get set up. Let's go. Let's jump. I knew that uh, coming in training camp, I basically told my friends, this is going to be a hell of a training camp. It's going to be pretty hard. It's going to be intense. You're going to start with a puck. You're going to give it over here to Olsen. Olsen, jump in the middle. Stay on your half of the ice. Drive, drive. Stop in front. You know what you're doing or no? For a while there, I wondered, how, how is this going to work out? Because here's a, a new NHL coach, first-time NHL coach, that, who was never a former player. And, uh, and I think those coaches always run the risk of having veteran players say, who the heck is this guy? You get your feet behind the line. Puck's supposed to be on the blue line. Get on the blue line, no cheat. Get the puck on the blue line. Let's go! He's on top of the ball, and uh, him and, and Lauren Henning and Paul McQueen, I mean, these guys know what they're doing. Mike Babcock making his NHL debut tonight behind the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim bench here in St. Louis for the season opener. Here's McDonald, shot, score! McDonald, quarter to LeClaire, shot, score! LeClaire and the Ducks have a two-goal lead. The Mighty Ducks win at St. Louis 4-3 in the season opener. Mike Babcock will get the game puck, his first ever NHL win. You couldn't ask for a better start to the new season. The Ducks bought into Babcock's system, and it showed. Racing shorthanded, he got around York. Sakura, score! And the rookie, Stanislav Chistov. 
And a goal! Cross the line on left wing. Got it back to Korea. has got an opening. In comes Paul. Backhander. Score! Off the crossbar and in! Like the rest of the Ducks, goaltender J.S. Jaguer was coming of age. During a four-game homestand in December, he took center stage. Now York winds up. Oh, save Jaguer! Turned away by the right pad of Jaguer. Second consecutive shutout. Is there anybody hotter in this league right now? No one is. It feels so good out there. You don't have any pain anywhere. You know, your body feels good. You feel like uh, you could run a marathon and, you know, you wouldn't be even tired. The crowd here at the Arrowhead Pond stands up and pays tribute to J.S. Jaguer. That's a long shutout streak in the modern era in the National Hockey League that they just witnessed. Right away the first season, we just, you know, new system, everything, everybody's, you know, adjusting, the coach adjusting to the other people around them, so we just kept progressively getting better until Christmas time. We went into Christmas playing well, and we came back after Christmas a bunch of fat cats, and spent too much time patting ourselves on the back over Christmas, and suddenly we lost, we lost. It was that time of, period, time of year where you either make or break, you start heading towards the playoffs, or you start heading towards uh, you know, the summertime. So we went into Colorado, a back-to-back -back, uh, game, and I mean, tough, tough game to win in there. And, uh, you know, it was reality time. Facing the formidable avalanche, Anaheim overcame an early two-goal deficit, thanks to Jason Krogh and Peter Sikora. Center, they got a chance. Oh. Roots and Woody pass it up for it. Sikora scores! They do it again! 18.5 left in this period, and they've tied the game at three. Oh, that's amazing. Forsberg an inch away and another big time shot and a penalty coming Rob Blake. Power play is capitalized now. Come on. Let's work it. Let's work out of here. Only needed a couple of shots to get that power play goal. In the middle, shot score! Sakara! Power play goal and the Ducks have taken the lead at 4-3. And the seven game winless streak is over. 5-3 at a high. It proved to be the turning point of their season. We built from there and and just kept building on that and, and, and over the time we built that we could, we believe we could win any hockey game and, and really compete against the good teams. Knowing they could now play with the league's elite, Anaheim won six of nine before the All-Star break. Sakura wins the puck. In front of the Korea big save. Rebound loose. Sakura scores. Peter Sakura scores. While the Ducks had earned a well-deserved All-Star break, GM Brian Murray stayed hard at work, acquiring game-breaking defenseman Sandus Ozelinch from the Florida Panthers. They were playing good defense in Anaheim, but they, they realized they needed that one guy that can bring the puck out. They needed that one guy in the point in the power play. Sandus Ozelinch is a unique player and, and was a great fit right off the bat uh, when he went to Anaheim. Upon his arrival, Ozo witnessed a major milestone. Ozelinch joins the rush. Ozelinch to the front of the net and redirected just wide by Oates. Oates gets it back from Sakura in front to Korea. Score! And there it is. Oates leaves Gordie Howe behind him with that assist. Anaheim had emerged from the depths of the Western Conference to contend for a playoff spot. The Ducks' top brass knew something special was happening. And then at the trade deadline, uh, Brian Murray came in the room and basically said, you know what, guys, I, I see something on the ice that I remember seeing in, in, in 96 when I was in Florida. There's so much chemistry going on right now that uh, we're just going to add two guys that I think could bring some depth to the team, and, and that's what they did with Steve Thomas and Rob Niedermeyer. And adding Niedermeyer and, and adding Steve Thomas, Anaheim was able to get a couple of veteran players who have significant playoff experience. It means a lot for the younger players on this team to sit in the locker room and kind of look to Niedermeyer or Thomas and uh, listen to what they have to say, and I think it's relaxed them an awful lot. Thomas did most of his preaching on the ice, scoring 10 goals in the season's final 12 games. As Oslinch now moves up ice, his pass for Thomas gets through, shot score! Steve Thomas has done it again! Second half of the year, we're in the top five teams in the NHL. We had one less point than the Detroit Red Wings that everybody talked about. They had 56, we had 55. Don't tell me this is a surprise. It's not a surprise to the people that matter, the people that are driving the bus, like Rooch and Paul and Carney and Jaguar. They know, they believe. The Mighty Ducks complete their greatest season in history. The franchise with 95 points this season also gets their first playoff berth since 1999. Their reward? First round matchup with the defending Stanley Cup champion, Detroit Red Wings.
Is it exciting though? I mean, it always seems like there's a buzz in the air. Obviously, the first game, just as soon as the yeah, start. Yeah, it's exciting time. That's what players talk about. This is what they want. This is why these guys hang around year after year after year. It's not so much the regular season, but it's this time of year. We're a team that's been there before, and you know we get excited this time of year. We're right frame of mind. The most important thing is we're healthy, and now we just got to put uh, our best game on the ice. Well, I think the mentality here, um, you know, the cup is the is the only thing really. The Red Wings had the sense that they thought they were going to roll past the Mighty Ducks in five games. But I would tell anyone who would listen: this team wins when they don't play particularly well. And to me, that's the sign of a, of a very dangerous hockey team. Tonight, it's all about us, eh, fellas? It's all about us. It's all about getting on their team, make them play defense. Okay, let's outchange, let's outwork, and out want them. We have to be the best we can be. We have to be better than we've been all year to continue to be successful. Our whole focus is take a step a day. Start us, start us, start us, go. Control what you can control. Push, push, push the pace, Paulie. That's what we got. Let's get at it. Look how Anaheim just staying back. They are not challenging the puck. Hey, listen up here. Right now, we're watching them play. They're moving the puck all over. We got to get jumping so we're not just giving them the puck. You know, I thought it was going to be a, a big challenge for us. You know, obviously for the first time for everybody, how are we going to respond? Um, what's the team going to do? And then, uh, you know, for me, it was, I just changed. And it kind of bounced right to me, and I just banged it in. Deflected shot, score! Oh, some backhander has tied the game at one. We answered the bell, and we never got behind the eight ball ever. With the score tied, Anaheim's grinding, bend but don't break style began to dictate the tempo of the game. Chaguer, the cornerstone of the Ducks' game plan, settled in save by save, leading his team into overtime. And it was the first time I ever played uh, overtime in, in that long in the NHL, and usually, usually the five minutes. It, it was, you know, for me, a lot of fun to be part of that uh, uh, kind of experience. But the young netminder's fun was short-lived. He suddenly came under fire midway through the first overtime. Cleared up and out of the zone. Paulson couldn't hold it in. Here's Roma tie. Hit the pass. Score. Hang on. The light's on. The official signals go. The light came on late. There was no initial indication of goal. They're going to go upstairs to check. Well, when the play happened, as soon as you saw the shot go to the net, then it was a hit and the light went on. I instantly asked Carvey, did it go in? Instantly. I said, Mac, I don't think it's a goal. He's, he wants to know instantly. You gotta, you gotta let us know. You gotta let us know. And he kept telling me, I don't think it went in. I don't think it went in. And I said, We need to know right away. As soon as you can get it, let me know what's going on. You see it being waved off by Jaguar, but his call's not final. For me, I just looked up and I was looking at Jiggy and I said, Wow, this guy wants to be great. Crossing his arms that, that the goal didn't go in, the goal didn't go in. I think that was a defining moment for our team. Just by uh, where the puck hit the, hit the post, you know, it was impossible for it to go in. And uh, I wasn't even worried because I could see where the water was on the, on the post. It was impossible. No goal. We go on. With the game spilling into a third overtime session, Jaguar and the Ducks continued their surprising story. But the first chapter of this tale would end with Paul Correa in the role of hero. And an overtime win in the third overtime. Two to one Anaheim and Korea gets the game winner. Well, it was nice to finally get a win there. I mean, uh, we haven't had a lot of success uh, even in the regular season in that arena. So it was nice to get a huge goal for our team. Today's game, oh, wings, come on. You know, the wings have got to win. They can't. They can't let a second one, a second one go down here at home. They got to win it so they can. They can win the whole series of this round back here at home, Game Five. Follow 
a sudden this Anaheim team that just wouldn't stop has tied this game up and it is 2-2. Two -two. Niedermeyer, they get on side, moved it in the middle, little opening, Thomas! Scores! The veteran! It is 3-2 Anaheim! Do you believe it? I tell you, it is a stunned full house. Here's the joke. Thomas at 1546 has given that eye in the lead. Keith Carney's got it. Carney drops it off. Played just deep by LeClaire to run the clock out, and the Mighty Ducks have gone up 2-0 with two wins in Detroit. Three to two. It was kind of funny. I actually said to him when we got the game tied, I said, Stump, like there's 5.30 left. You better get one before she's over. And he kind of nods his head. Next thing you know, it's 5-0. I want to get you live in the ice though so after. Hey, Steve? Yep. You know, when your coach and your teammates have confidence in you, it just it, it moves right to, to you as, a, as an individual. And it seems like everything I shoot is going to go in. And it's just an unbelievable feeling, especially at this time of year. The sense I had when I went into the locker room afterwards is that the players all of a sudden believe that they could now beat Detroit because they just beat them in a game that they had, they had no business winning. And they knew that they would get better as the series went on. A very good evening, everyone, in front of a sellout crowd tonight at the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim, a night that the home fans have been waiting for for four years. You know, it's so loud in here. I didn't know it could be that loud. People don't realize how much it pushes you when they start cheering and screaming. It gives you an extra push all the time. And uh, uh, there is such thing as a home ice advantage when the crowd is loud and when they're, they're really into the game. It was, it was awesome to see that. Fueled by the hometown fans, Jaguar turned in yet another stellar performance. And the Ducks provided him with just enough offense for a 2-1 victory. The win set up the unimaginable possibility of a sweep. But Anaheim remained cautious. What we've seen from this exact same team in the past, they're uh, pretty capable of winning uh, four straight games. It's a start yeah. for us, but we've got uh, a long way to go, and they're a great team. And uh, They're going to come out really hard next game, and uh, we're going to have to be even better if we want to win. You know, we're up 3 nothing. I think we have a stranglehold on it, but the guys are scared to death to, to let one game go and have to head back to Detroit for game five. And the fear of letting the team get back in and the fear of losing that next game has been a really motivating factor for this team. Fedorov sends it in. Carney, Fedorov collides. Fedorov, great play! Scores! Sergei Fedorov! And this game is tied! Fedorov's goal forced overtime. With their worst fears on the brink of becoming reality, the Ducks focused on what would be the biggest goal of the series. Here's Ruchin, Steve Ruchin, a little one, Ruchin, a shot! Save made, Joseph! Rebound, not center, in front, Ruchin! Scores! 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 The Mighty Ducks have knocked off the defending Stanley Cup champions! Three to two in overtime! Bang, they beat Detroit four straight. And the minute they beat Detroit four straight, this team's for real. The Mighty Ducks sweep the Detroit Red Wings in one of the most startling upsets in playoff history. In game three and game four, they were as good as the Detroit Red Wings, and, and you could just see the team getting better and better and better. You beat supposedly the best team in the league. Why can't you beat anybody now? Well, uh, you know, it's the series, and anybody can beat anybody in this league, and uh, it's going to get harder and harder every game. So we need to be uh, ready for the next series, and I think uh, if we get the same preparation as we're doing right now, we should uh, be ready. Jaguar, the 25-year-old, the MVP of this series by far and away. Today we are getting jiggy with it with uh, J.S. Jaguar. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Are you on cloud good. nine? No, no. We're, uh, we don't have time to be there. You know, we just got to stay focused and uh, worry about what we have to do. The first round. Has it sunk in yet? Yes and no. I mean, in the dressing room, I don't think anybody thinks it's, it's that big a deal. You know, we, uh, we all were very confident that we could win that series. You know, maybe not in four games, you know, that you know, came a little bit by surprise. I think we, we played really well and we, uh, uh, we deserve to win at the end. Are you nervous before a series begins, you, that being your first playoff series ever? I was, uh, I was nervous uh, before that series began, you know, uh, you, you're young, never been into the playoff and you know it's going to be very intense, you're not sure what it's going to be like and uh, 
uh, you know, you get a little bit nervous, but you gotta try to use that emotion in a positive way and try to uh, uh, use it as a fuel, you know, almost just kind of to uh, give you an extra edge on the ice. I mean, you know these guys, you look on the rocks, you have Eisman and Fedorov and Hull and Robitaille and Lindstrom and Shannon. I mean, all these, these names, these great goal scoring names. You look at them game one, game two, do you think differently than you think about them come game three, game four? No, no, uh, you know, the whole series I was aware of who was on the ice at all times. Uh, you know, they're a great team, you know, great scoring, you know, everybody can score in that team. We approach the, every game the same way we did from the beginning to the end. 165 saves on 171 shots in the series, that's a 9.65 save percentage, nothing short of absolutely magnificent. Now the world knows who he is. Darren McCarty said, and you probably know the quote now, I'm going to paraphrase it, but he said, you know, the NHL playoffs all through history have been about guys making a name for themselves, whether they're rookies or goalies or young guys or whatever. And he said, I remember when I was a kid, there was a guy back in the mid-80s named Patrick Waugh who did the exact same kind of thing in Montreal. When you hear someone say that, a fellow professional, about you, how does it make you feel? There's a big difference between me and Patrick, because Patrick has got four Stanley Cup rings, and I don't have any. As long as you're, you don't get those championships and all that, uh, you can't be compared to a guy like Patrick Ola because he's, he's definitely one of a kind. What's it about a goalie or do goalies get in the zone? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. You get in the zone where you, you feel very comfortable and uh, you feel like nothing can bother you. You know, you're, you're in good shape, you're seeing the puck well, you're, uh, everything seems to be a little bit easier to do for you. As you embark on the next series, the names don't stop. Now you have Madonna and Young, and Zuboff, and not. How do you change focus from this kind of Red Wing jersey coming at me to the Star jersey with all these names? Well, it's going to be, uh, you know, a different team, different scenarios, you know, uh, uh, different, uh, they're going to have different tendencies that they're going to throw at us, and, uh, you know, obviously if you want to be the team like that, you need to be prepared, you need to know what's coming, and, uh, uh, and at the end, at the end, it's going to be about us, you know, it's about what we do on the ice. If we play as good as we can, then we give ourselves a chance to win. Is this the best time of your professional life? I think it's the uh, most exciting time, you know, it's very playoff. That's what you play for, you know, you play 82 games to get ready for the playoff. And, uh, uh, you know, in the NHL, you, I've never been part of that because missing the playoff all the time. So uh, it's fun to be part of that. It's fun. It's a great experience for myself. Uh, great experience for the team, and I think we, all, you know, we can only get better by playing those games because they're very intense, they're very hard to win, and that's how you, you get better as a team, is winning or losing those games. You know, you learn from everything. The man, John Sebastian Jaguer, is now a playoff goaltender. Game one, Western Conference semifinal. The mighty Ducks of Anaheim are here. The stars in the home white, the Ducks in the visiting purple, and we are underway. It's Crock. Got a lane. Looks to go. He scores. The former Hobie Baker winner. And the mighty Ducks of Anaheim take a 1 0 lead. Here's Hatcher. That's a lane. Shot score. As regulation continued, so too did the seesaw battle. The mighty Ducks and Stars were headed deep into overtime. They have battled valiantly throughout the night. And who knows how much longer it will continue. Shot! Oh! Oh! And Jaguar has it! Triple overtime. Something special brewing here. Is under it is under the play continues on. Quadruple over the tenth longest game. Now the ninth, the eighth, the seventh longest game in NHL Stanley Cup. Five Shagare, longest game in Stanley. Who's going to be the hero tonight? We're in our fifth overtime. I remember before the fifth overtime when uh, Stumpy came to the locker room and he said, "Guys, somebody please score a goal. I, I don't know enough." Leclaire hit by Hatcher, centered by Archer. Personally, one of the biggest goals I ever scored, and 
you know, I feel very fortunate that I got the chance to score that goal. In game two, Jean Sebastian Jaguer started where he left off, limiting the Stars' offense and injecting his teammates with confidence. Backhanded! Stopped by Jaguer. Once you beat Detroit, you, you feel like you can beat anybody. In the Dallas series, especially early on, they were able to win games largely because of their goaltender on nights that they didn't bring their A game. Backhand for the game! And it's loose in the fast whistle there! That just gives everybody more confidence because they know in the back of their mind there's a whole new level that we can bring our game to. We know we can play better, and yet even when we're not playing our best, we're still winning. Loose puck and it's in! Niedermeyer was there, and with a minute nine to play in regulation, and we are headed to overtime again. Loose puck, here's a chance, shot, score! Stars. Wow! In Game 3, Anaheim and its fans were silenced as Turco and the Stars shut the door, shifting the pressure back to Jaguar in Game 4. Madonna to pick up the puck tomorrow. Shot the save by Jaguar. Set on blast! Jaguar came out. It goes into the netting. Stumar. Sanders! The view! Robbed! Absolutely robbed by Jaguar! Drops it back. Save Shakir How? Come on! We had no business being in that game, you know, let alone winning. It. It's been unreal for us. He just kept her going. So it's it's crazy when you have a guy like that, how much confidence it adds to the whole team. Hands it off. Ozil is across the clear. Let's talk about it! Power play goal! J.S. lost his luster in Dallas as the Stars appeared to finally solve Jaguar in Game 5. Well, the three goals picked up by the Dallas Stars go against Jaguar. So 29-year-old Martin Gerber is in net now for the Ducks. Tough times don't build character, it reveals character. A must-win game for the Stars, and they're going to win it. They'll face the same situation in Anaheim on Monday night. Got chased, uh, he was tested. Uh, next game he came back and he was great again. And we are underway in game six. The Dallas Stars, the number one seed in the West. One game away from going home. Madonna took Keith Carney down. Centered shot. What a save on Lennon. And the power of Madonna winds up. Saves the air. Rebound loose and he recovers to turn Hatcher away. Oh, gets it in. Swats it to the slot. Kick free. Chief stop. Score! Thomas with a soccer move to get it to Chief stop. Down low, Paulson got it to Thomas in front here off the point, and Soleil, he scores! Ruslan Soleil, the Ducks have the lead back! Scoring in the playoff, it's always exciting, and especially against a team like Dallas. It's an amazing feeling, and uh, you're feeling like you're doing something for a team, you're doing something good. Zubov has time, looks, looks, wrist shot, score! Brendan Morrow redirected it. That one will count, it's 3-3. Three to three. Morrow was right next to me, and the thing is, is, it was a point shot. The way it looked, he kind of just did a power turn and it hit his skate and went in. He didn't really kick it, but I tied up his stick, and so he basically directed it in with his skate. And when that tied it up, you know, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. We just kept going at it. And Lettman barely clears the zone. The player turns back with him. He's got open ice. Picked up the puck right outside of their zone, and they had the, their line out there for a while, and they were pretty tired. I had a feeling they were tired, and I just knew I had to reattack right away. Wanted to pull up, now to the backhand. I remember his reaction, you know, turning around and jumping in the air. It was just crazy. You know, you get off the bench, it's, you know, it's just, it was just crazy. Ozilich holds down the rebound! A minute six to go! Comes it south, ducks in six. They're going to the Western Conference Finals. Let's talk about it!
In the conference finals, the Ducks would face another Cinderella story in the Minnesota Wild. Although most in the hockey world gave Anaheim an edge, the Ducks were leery. I was more scared to play them than I was scared to play Detroit and Dallas because uh, I, I played for Jacques for three years and, and I know how much he prepared the team to play every night. And they have the system down to perfection. But once again, Jaguar would set the tone with a save for the ages in game one. Here's Burnett, couldn't get it on his stick, in front. Gabrick, oh, how did that stay out? Gabrick with a gaping net. It's kind of tough to see from the bench, but when I saw the replay, I go, oh my God, are you kidding me? How did he stop that one? The save that Jiggy made uh, with his paddle of his goal stick was just spectacular. And just when you, when you see that coming from a, a guy that, and you just understand how prepared he is to play and how much he wants to win, and that just filters right down the line through everybody. This time, Sakura would be the hero in double overtime. Sakura's in the middle of Sakura. So didn't do nothing the whole game and then I got one chance and I score a goal, so <laughs> I know sometimes it happens like that. In game two, Jaguar again shut out Minnesota, giving the Ducks a two games to none lead in the series. The Ducks two in the wild nothing. 153 minutes, 17 second shutout streak. Back in Anaheim, Jaguar would again frustrate the wild. A mix-up gathering in a it's he thought I was going to take the puck because it was my guy coming out from the point applying the pressure, so uh, we just, both of us left the puck there and uh, Gabor, their, their most skilled offensive player with uh, most speed, was racing down the ice, but Jiggy made the save and uh, the rest is history. Paul Correa then broke out of a scoring drought, tallying twice, one of them a highlight reel goal. So there's your final, the Ducks four, the Wild nothing, a 3-0 lead in this series for the Ducks. The Wild have not scored a goal in three games. Entering game four, the only question was whether the Wild would ever solve Jaguar. They did in the first period, but the Ducks' Adam Oates provided all the offense Anaheim would need for a series sweep. Shot in wide of the net, took a bounce off the back of it though, and Fernandez saw that one. That one takes a hop right in front, Scott! is playing in front of the net here. Might have been an unusual spot on a power play for the great passer Adam Holtz. Center, bounce, bounce, that's why he's there! He's got two power play goals! And a jammed away by Carney. Center, two, one, the Ducks go to the Stanley Cup Finals! Two to one! The improbable run continues for this Cinderella team. proud of themselves and the job they've done, but in reality, we're still missing this fun. And so we're going to get some time off to get ready. And you know, the beauty about life is that you can dream and make it happen. And uh, we've got a real good group here that's getting better, and we're just going to keep getting better. So enjoy this, boys. You should be real proud. And let's keep it going. Man. Put on the long, skinny thing. Stop. <laughs> Then we come three on zero, we get it out to the side, and then hit the wide side, and it should be bang, bang in the back of the net. Execute. Hey, execute! Do it right! Get your feet going, get your feet going! Pull it! Mac, come here. We're not workaholics today, boys. So. Not really, no. Hey, come here, come here, come here, fellas. Come here, let's go. Hey, hey, look, our brain isn't here, eh? Like our brain is not here. All we gotta do is bear down. All we're asking for is an hour a day. Our preparation, it's not that we didn't, physically weren't involved, but mentally we weren't here today. And I know when it's a ways away it's tough, but I mean, we gotta make each other accountable here, okay? So tomorrow when we come back, our brain's gonna be sharp as well. Work our off and make sure we're ready to go.
Okay, once again, look after your family and your tickets. That's all done today, right? That's the deadline. Today's the deadline. See Marine, get everything looked at. On behalf of Delta Airlines, we'd like to thank you for flying with Delta today. And hope you have a nice evening and a nice stay here in the New York City area. The well, day before, I was actually more starting to wind up already. Usually, you know, at game day, you start winding up thinking about the game, but it's been, you know, we had that break, so I've been thinking about it for the whole time. So I'm uh, Isabel, and we got a Jiggy sister. I'm here, I'm very excited. I, I think I'm more nervous than him, I'm sure. And welcome to the Cup Finals game number one. We began with 30 teams about eight months ago. Now, here we are, down to two teams. Anaheim, just their 10th year of existence in the finals for the first time, and no one, I mean, none of the experts expected Anaheim to be here. The Ducks worried us. We know how good they were. Any team that beat Detroit Red Wings, uh, one of the best teams all year long in the last decade, four straight. To beat the Dallas Stars the way they did with all the, the, the great players they had in that high club. We knew this was no, no fluke, no coincidence, and, and we kept our minds focused that this is going to be a very, a very interesting series. Come on here, Marty. Come on here, Marty. Here we go. Here were two teams that are virtually mirror images of one another in how they play. They like to counterattack. They like to clog up the neutral zone. They're both very patient teams. So this series, I think, is very simply going to come down to goaltending. Someone is going to have to come up with big save after big save. Jaguar, in the early rounds, never panicked. Fearless three overtimes against Detroit, five overtimes against Dallas. The double overtime game, 0-0, into overtime against Minnesota, fearless. You know, it was just crazy when the national anthem starts playing and you're in the Stanley Cup Finals, everything's whirling around you. And... It was a long waiting period that made it a little bit tougher. There's so much uh, anticipation, but uh, it's just nice to get started. Let's go, come on. Let's go, Jamie, come on. Come on, do a little fix right, boys. Little fix, little fix. Four on three, Ozilich leaves it. Open shot, that one hit the post. Devils have not lost a game where they've scored first. Near side wards, Freeland's got it. Freeland with Freeland, Freeland in the middle shot. Stop! Freeland is on fire! We were just squeezing our sticks a little too tight. We kind of realized that what we were playing for and what we wanted so bad. The first goal is very, very important. Defensive teams, trapping teams, uh, are twice as good with a lead as they are from behind. The Devils are doing to the Ducks what they have done to so many teams all year. Just clamping down. We weren't moving the puck well. We were scared to, to actually make plays. We totally changed our style of game and, you know, we let New Jersey frustrate us with something that we'd been able to do to the three previous teams that we played. Hey, they're all quicking us right now. No way do they want it more than us. Centered, Elias, Elias, what a move! Picks it up, save me! Elias, centered, moves and scores! Grant Marshall! been ready we were the more rested team and they looked like they were more rested you know they came out they were flying and that should have been us well the fans all on their feet now as the devils finish it off three nothing new jersey's such a great team you know they they showed us they were uh, they were hungry tonight and uh, you know um that just can't be we got to be a team that's uh, hungry every night they weren't there yeah. Tonight they will be there, I'm sure of it. They were not, it was not the Ducks we saw uh, during the series. I hope tonight they'll be better. For sure it'll be better. Unfortunately for Jaguar and the Ducks, their struggles continued in game two. Lewandowski is shot. In front, score! Patrick Elias! They were on their game plan. They were, they were working hard. They are a tough team to play against. They don't give you a lot of offense. Gomez to Eliash's shot block, rebound, Tarnowski right point, he shoots, and scores! That puck was deflected in front! You talk about a team that knows where the juggler is, when they get a goal, it picks up. When they get a 2-0 lead, I mean, they are just smelling the end, and they come right at you. You know, they were making us, you know, make uh, bad decisions and bad plays, and, you know, they were jumping all over us, and, you know, they really dominated the first two games. The final of Nipples, three, the Dutch, nothing! Has done it again. 
we all have to play better. We all have to bring our A game next game, and uh, uh, it's, it's going to be a great challenge for us. We'll see how we're going to answer. Overmatched by the Devils thus far, Jean Sebastian Jaguer defended his team prior to game three in Anaheim. Yesterday you were a bit upset with the suggestion, just the suggestion by some that you might be a flu. I'm talking for the team in general. Yeah. You know, people thought that we were in a bubble or, uh, you know, we're just kind of lucky to be here. We're not lucky to be here. We deserve to be here. We deserve to be in this series. We deserve to play. We deserve to have fun. We deserve to, uh, to have some success and uh, we'll do whatever it takes to try to win. We're down 0-2, but that's okay. We're coming back. We're coming back with a vengeance. You know, we lost two road games. That's no big deal. We're going to show them what's up. We're excited to be home here in our house and get back on track. We've had two games under our belt since the break, and there's no reason for us not to really be good. Mighty Brodeur has got that streak running. He has shut out the Mighty Ducks in the first two games. This is a must-win game for the Ducks. They've got to find a way to get it done here. Puck is turned over. Here's McKenzie. Now Gomez. What a shot save made by Shigeri. Hangs on. Ozilich is shot. Hurry up! A flurry of activity here by the Ducks, but the period will come to an end with the Devils able to clear. Seven periods of the finals, and no one has scored a goal yet against Marty Brodeur, Boy, goaltender. That's incredible. Come on, see that first one, man. Go get it here. Put it on the net! Shoot him! Ozilich, chance! It's a brand new game, tied at one. Oh, oh, good. Stop it, stop it, it in. Stop it. Ozilich kicks it to himself, shoots it in. Score! Score! In a weird goal. You got to pinch me because I don't believe what just happened. Oh my gosh. That's the weirdest goal I've seen in the Stanley Cup Championship Series. One of the things that New Jersey does very well is when a goal is scored, they come right back to you. Batted down in the slot, taken by Marshall. Just turned it in, score! Scott Gomez and the Devils have tied it again. It's 2-2. Come on, boys, come on, boys. On the far side for Chista, puts on the break. Chista for the kick, here it comes in. Ooh, lock it, it's knocked away by the Devils. And the horn sounds to win the third period. Overtime tonight in game three. So the Mighty Ducks are 5-0 in overtime in these playoffs. Oates and Rayom on the faceoff. Soleil shoots, goal! Ruth Von Soleil wins the game for the Mighty Ducks! It's so excited. You're just going nuts, you know. You're just going, you're screaming, everybody jumping you, everybody rubbing your face. I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. And, uh, everybody wants to be that and uh, in that position. And uh, I would like to be there as many times as I can. Uh, you know, these guys are there to, to live a dream also, you know, and uh, they, they weren't just going to roll over because they were down 2 nothing. and they, they showed us what kind of team they were, what character they have. Anaheim win means we go back to New Jersey tied at two, and we have at least a six-game final. A Devils win, and they can go home to clinch. And here we go, in game four. Paulson hands it off for Thomas. Thomas back to Tista. Oh, he hit the crossbar. Oates won the draw, and it's set in. Oates in shot, and the ball is again. Oates trying to cut the angle. Madden in, Madden the shot, saved. Rebound, blown by Chagain. Third period, we are scoreless in game four. 5.35 left to go, third period. Anaheim has won nine games where they've scored the goal either in overtime or with under five minutes remaining. Jason Crowe, center. Backhander from Noah kicked it away. That is going to do it. We are going to have to settle this in overtime. A vital overtime. Decide who's going to skate the Stanley Cup this year. Intercepted by Chistop. Back comes Thomas. Thomas with Paulson cutting. Here's Ozo Lynch in. Ozo Lynch center shot. Oh my God! Rebound shot.
after seeing it go in and being in the finals and having a Stanley Cup, you know, overtime winning goal is special. And I will always remember that as probably being the biggest goal I've ever scored. 19 years to get to the finals for Steve Thomas. His first finals point is a goal, a game winner at 39 seconds. Just think about it, put it in perspective for a second. If I would have told you at the trade deadline, or for those of the guys that have been here from the start of the year, that we'd be right here, you'd take this. How hard can you scrap and fight to get this done? Don't get ahead of yourself. Enjoy this for 15 minutes, and then let's get back to doing what we do. Because we can outwork this team, boys. All right, they're going down this team right here. Keep pushing. <laughs> For only the second time in the playoffs, the Devils found themselves without momentum. Losing two overtime games, and you start to think, you know, how does this team keep pulling out wins? You know, they, they, they keep winning in overtime. We're back to 2 2 after a, a dominant start to the series in, in the first two games. We've now entered the ninth week of this chase for glory. Where do they find the energy? You would think in one of these games we would see three, four goals scored by one of these teams. It certainly has not happened yet. We'll see whether or not game five is that night. Trujan on Brodeur. And a pretty nice early save. Another clean face up win. It's gone. Right off the face off. And Sakura sneaks one underneath Brodeur. Eliash trying to draw through. Can Barney take him down? And a penalty coming on Keith Barney. Now loose lines away. Hit hard by Grant Marshall. As the Devils become more effective at that score! What a centering pass! Elias to the Devils! You ought to compete on college, gentlemen. Roach to Florida, Korea! Here's Korea. Sends it to the faceoff circle in front of Kim. Score! Roach in! Ties it! Two-two! Who says these teams live by defense alone? We've got a period done, and what a period! Tied at two after the first, this contest had a much higher tempo than the series' first four games. And have some black and blue bodies before this thing is over. He has to come up with a hit, pass to the front of the net, it's in! It may have gone off a mighty duck player, but the Devils have taken a 3-2 lead. What an incredible game compared to the first four in this series. Oh my, bless you, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Everything at the net. Niedermeyer's got an open pulse and shot. It's tied again. Sammy Paulson, 3 3. Penalty's over. Breland redirected. Save made by Jaguar. We're due for a goal, aren't we? It's been about a minute and a half. Come on, boys. Let's go. Here's Pandolfo. And then the shot stop. Hang on. Let's go. Well, they'll, they'll look at it upstairs. I think that should be a goal. It's, it's a, a goal. goal. Well, the New Jersey Devils, when they lead after two periods in these playoffs, are nine wins and no losses. The most important period of hockey these two teams have played all year right now. We're on top of our D too quick. We got to help our D. Though they never gave up, the Ducks just could not stop the Devils' attack. Good shot blocked. Niedermeyer. Time to redirect. Lagan Brown scores! A 6-3 win, lead the series three games to two. They're obviously the harder working team, and they outwilled us. And uh, you know that's unfortunate, uh, but it happened. And uh, you know we don't intend on letting that happen uh, next game. Stanley Cup, unless the Mighty Ducks are mighty enough to force a game seven.
Everybody is asking, uh, when will Paul Curry score more goals and uh, give us more offense? Uh, has that worn on you at all, and uh, do you expect it might change? The Devils will shut them down like they have the whole entire series. They, they want to hit him. They're looking to hit him. He's playing scared. The cup is going home. environment. Uh, it was pretty evident quick that uh, it wasn't going to be an easy night. Now right in front of the catch, the goal from now it's in! It's a goal! Steve Thomas was there! We went out there and we just never really had a chance. They were up 3-0 after the first. We couldn't battle back. You know, Scotty hits hits Paul and he gets back up and, and then you're really thinking, this, this is not our, not our time, this is Anaheim's time. I was definitely concerned. I was hoping, uh, I was definitely hoping he got back up. Oh my goodness. He was out cold on the ice and I didn't think he was gonna come back. Can you believe he's back? No. Five or 10 minutes later, he rolls back on the ice, does a bit of stretching and he's ready to go. He's showing me something. I, 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 I didn't think we'd see him until next season. I can't believe that. That moment when Polly came back, you know, just to see him to come on the bench and the fans cheering, I think that uh, gave us some extra boost of energy. All I could think of, the only word I could think of was inspiring. But the Ducks' glorious ride would finally come to an end in Game 7. Scores! Mike Rapp deflected it! For the mighty Ducks, obviously it's the end of the line here. But what a run. They reestablished hockey in Anaheim. And they have made, I think, a lot of people who are fans of them very proud of what they've done in this magical, magical run. Jean-Sebastien Jaguer was rewarded for his phenomenal performance with the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoffs most valuable player. I feel very blessed that I could get such an award, but in the same time, I wish they could put everybody's name on that trophy because one player alone can do it by himself. And as they had throughout the season, Anaheim fans turned out in force to salute the men who won the West. For you people that come and support us here today again and for the run we've had here and the excitement in Southern California and just across the U.S. and obviously in Canada, it's been absolutely phenomenal. We thank you, the fans, and we look forward to things just getting better and better here in Anaheim as we pursue our dreams. Thank you very much. From the organization's point of view, uh, the fan support, the interest in our team has just taken off, uh, and we should, in, in the long run, have a fan base here and enthusiasm in our, in our community that probably couldn't happen if he didn't have a good playoff. You know, I lost two game sevens last three years in the Sega final, but I'm still very proud of what the team did out there, what I personally did out there, and uh, with the confidence I have in the team I have here right now, what I play for, you know, I'm sure I'm going to win it sooner or later. We're looking forward definitely to next year, and uh, you know, there's some young players here, some great players, and 
Jiggy's got a long future ahead of him and hopefully a lot of years here. So uh, it's uh, looking pretty good, definitely.